Hello, this is Dr. John Bebo Show, director of the BSU Street Ensemble. This semester was unique as we were awarded a grant from the Martin Richard Institute for Social Justice in order to tackle a project of rejuvenating a work from an underrepresented Black composer. We took the surviving manuscript parts and made a proper score for future study and performances. We also updated and corrected the individual parts, researched the life of the composer, and performed and recorded the piece. Joseph Bologna was born on December 25th. 1745 on a plantation on the island of Guadalupe. His father was a rich plantation owner and his mother was a black slave. Code Nomer or Black Code imposed harsh restrictions on freedom of religion, marriage, and commerce for black slaves living in the colonies. So when Joseph was seven years old, his father took his mother and Joseph to France. Upon arrival in France, they found that Code Nomer wasn't limited to the French colonies since Joseph and his mother unfortunately had to register with the police simply because of their race. Yet Joseph found freedom in his extracurricular activities, which included becoming a master fencing champion, great boxer, runner, ice skater, swimmer, and marksman, of which the soon to be US President John Adams spoke of him saying, quote, he will hit the button, any button on the coat or waistcoat of the greatest masters. Joseph graduated from the Royal Academy in 1766 and was made an officer in the court of King Louis XV. He was henceforth known as Le Chevalier de Saint Georges. With that title, he began his career in music as a violinist and music director. By 1773, Le Chevalier was the director of the Concert des Amateurs, which was made up of the finest musicians in the region. The citizens of Paris flocked to concert halls just to hear the violin virtuoso play, as well as the music that he had composed. He had made personal acquaintance with Marie Antoinette, in which she put forth Le Chevalier as a leading candidate to fill the director position of the Paris Opera. Yet two singers and a dancer petitioned to not perform under the direction of a, quote, mulatto. For the next decade and a half, music continued to be the center of Le Chevalier's life. He commissioned six symphonies known as the Paris Symphonies by Joseph Haydn, in which Le Chevalier conducted and premiered himself. Le Chevalier wrote string quartets, concertos, symphonies, operas, and shaped the symphonie concertante form, which is a concerto for two or more players in contrast to the orchestra, in which Mozart took direct influence from. Overall, life was great for Le Chevalier but the coming French Revolution would change everything. Despite owing a lot of his fame and prosperity to the monarch, he decided to side with the revolution. He created an all black regiment, which had success fighting off the Austrians at the Battle of Lille in 1792. In addition, Le Chevalier's role may have played a part of inspiration for the literary character of Armas from the Three Musketeers. In the end, he became a hero yet he was denounced and thrown into jail for a year. Unfortunately, much of Le Chevalier's music was lost during the French Revolution and what survived, what was clearly forgotten. When he died in 1799, slavery had been abolished for five years, yet when Napoleon reimposed slavery in 1802, Le Chevalier de Saint George's name and his legacy was erased from the history books. However, the music world recently began to once again take notice of his works. Today, musicians perform his music somewhat frequently. There's even a strait named after him in Paris. So hopefully this is the beginning of a revival in the interest of Le Chevalier. And we hope that our work in creating a score, updated parts, and a recording of his work will continue to allow his music to be formed as well as to be heard. Thank you for tuning in. And now, without further ado, here is Joseph Bologna, Le Chevalier de Saint George's String Quartet, number two.
Thank you again for listening. Now let's hear from the Street Ensemble members on their reflections of the piece, the composer, and this project. I really enjoyed um, being able to play some of his music. Um, and uh, I think that it was really fascinating to hear about the connections actually between he and Mozart. Um, I had previously thought they they just um, had heard each other play together in Paris, um, but it was really interesting to know that they'd actually lived together in the same house. So to hear some of those potential influences um, reflected in the music was really great. Um, and also I think just being exposed to a quote unquote new composer um, is, is really valuable. And I think that uh, the whole concept of canon in classical music is a little bit weird um, and it's really good just to have a more uh, rounded perspective and broader perspective of who is playing who is making music and who is important um, and a lot of times we you know so far into the future um, we have blinders on and uh, forget about people who were really really impactful um, so it's it's really great to be able to to play Chevalier de Saint Georges's music and um, to learn more about him and his role in in the musical world um, in the 18th century. So I enjoyed this process. It was really interesting um, learning about the composer and his um, great life and all the um, great things he did. Um, all the hardship he faced as a composer. Um, some years he could perform, other years he couldn't. Um, it was interesting seeing our conductor transpose the music. Um, so what was, I think, fun about the transposing the music is um, each week um, we would find um, some phrase that needed to be adjusted, either the, um, the dynamics or the note written wasn't really what sounded the way we wanted it to sound. So that was a um, very interesting process and, and kind of fun. Um, in terms of the piece, I enjoyed the piece. I saw a lot of similarities with other composers like Haydn and Mozart. However, um, it was challenged with the key it was in. There were three flats and um, it gave me a little bit of a run for my money. Um, 
So, but overall, I enjoyed this process and I'm so glad Bebo, um, our conductor, um, um, led us on this little journey to learn about um, this composer. My name is Ben Swartz. I'm cello professor here at Bridgewater State University. And what was most informative and impactful to me um, in this process was learning about Josef Ballon's wide range of artistic interests as the quintessential, uh, quintessential classical period Renaissance man, in particular his um, area of expertise in fencing. And in fencing, um, it requires um, tactile sense of uh, using a foil or sword, very similar to how a cellist or violinist uh, would use uh, the bow in a deft and creative way. And it reminds me, of course, of my um, ex-teacher's book. Uh, my ex-teacher, Honor Bilsma, wrote this book, uh, Bach the Fencing Man Master, in which he suggests that Bach's creative use of asymmetric bowings is akin to um, a, a master artist in fencing. Um, so we can see um, the inner relationship and the inner marriage um, between a number of um, different artistic interests fused together simultaneously. I think working with this composer has been really fun. It was not easy at all, but it's also important that we expose ourselves to other minorities and music that they have to offer as well. Um, my music knowledge is limited, but I have not been aware of any classical music from other people of color. So it's been interesting to be able to play this piece. I think working with this composer has been really fun. It was not easy at all, but it's also important that we expose ourselves to other minorities and the music they have to offer as well. My music knowledge is limited, but I have not been aware of any classical music from other people of color. So it's been interesting to be able to play this piece. The piece is great. And after I read about the, the other story and what I learned about St. George really increases my appreciation for the for the piece and the piece is great and i believe that everyone in the world should know about saint george and again thank you people for putting everything together mm -hmm.